Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter, and I love to draw. And having been a teacher for 28 years, mainly t well, I taught science all that time, but I also got the opportunity to teach some art. Then I like, I still bring my teacherly qualities, my teacherly self here. And I like to encourage people and try to explain how things can be done and also give you some insight into the thought process I go through through when I'm creating anything, whether it's looking at Zentang or it's my more abstract or stylized um, art, or whether it's suggestions for ways that you can practice your both your hand-eye coordination and muscle skill, you know, fine motor control skills, but also to stretch your creativity muscles a little bit to help you with that idea that you are you too are a creative being. And the idea is that you will draw in your way and as long as you enjoy what you're doing doesn't matter what anybody else thinks that's a tough one I know because you know I still suffer with it from time to time well quite a lot actually depends what I'm doing but it's important that you in, you draw for enjoyment and everything else just falls into place that way and you develop your own style your own signature and people can look at it and go I know exactly who did that so um, I'm all for in individuality, shall we say. So, thank you to everybody who subscribed. If you haven't yet, please click that button. It doesn't cost you a thing. It just shows that you want to follow my channel and helps to share it with others who enjoy this kind of work. So, a couple of things. First things, in my last video, I tackled um, the Tangle Aquafleur, which I'd not done before. And I had an interesting comment. I can't remember who left it, but somebody said, I don't know if I'm going to get that circular kind of um, motion that you've got there or that spiraling. And there is a, a, a trick to doing this. There is. And I just want to show you that one. So I've just drawn a random wobbly shape and with um, Aquafleur, you're starting essentially with curved lines that come back to the edge and then hook over. So the first line is done like this. The second line you follow along the first line for a bit and then you deviate out so you get this kind of shape. Now the first one I've hooked over, this one I haven't. I'm not going to create that hook but instead this is my variation on this, so you don't get these hook shapes left. You just connect that one in that kind of way. Now, if you want this spiralling into the centre, you have to leave a space in the centre. So how do you do that? Well, instead of drawing straight from the beginning, if you pick a point a bit further along, and remember, we're drawing these in pairs. So the first line, hooks over in the pair. And the next line you just want to take up to this edge or perhaps a little bit over. Instead of hooking over, we're going to extend it so it joins up with that hook. I'm not doing a very good job here of making that tidy, but we'll get there. Then the next one, we want to start drawing along a bit further and allow that line to come out. Remember the first one's that hook over. Then the next one we draw along this line again and we're going to finish at that, the, the pencil line and then we're going to join them this way. And I prefer to draw a pencil line for this than an ink line because the pencil line will disappear and it gives you far more options as to what you do with these sections, whether you fill some of them in black or not. Okay, so the next one we're going to start further along. And you see this, the size here is getting smaller, the area it encloses as well. It's a lot easier to show than it is to actually describe what to do in words. So I am working in pairs of lines. So the first one I hook over and then the next one 
I take to the edge and then I join these two together with an arch. And you can see I'm beginning to develop a shape inside here that I'll be able to fill. So if I carry on doing this, and we'll see what we end up with. You can kind of control the shape in the middle if you wanted to, you could draw a, a guide in there in pencil that you use, but I quite think it's quite fun to allow it to be fairly random. So, so again, it's each of these sections is made by three strokes combined, really, three pen strokes. So the first one is the arching out and then the hook on the end. The second one, we're going to follow this line, stop at our pencil line there, and I've made a bit of a mess there, but it'll be fine. And then join over. Then the next one is start again. So we're hooking that one over. Then the next one, we're going to stop at that line and then draw it round. And you can see we're beginning to get back to the beginning. We're beginning to get back to the beginning. We're getting back to where we started here. And in my case, I'm able to get those to join up, but it doesn't matter if they don't. But I've got this space inside. Now you've got options. You could leave that space and fill it with something else and that'd be perfectly fine because it's quite an interesting shape. This one, it's turned out teardrop shaped. Yesterday's didn't. But it all depends on the shape that you draw that you're going to use as the guide for the shape of your aquafleur. So um, it depends on the size. It depends on how big and wide you make these, which direction your lines go in and everything. So I'm not going to start here. I'm going to carry on from the last line I drew. Now we don't need to hook over here. All we need to do is create pairs of lines really. And we're going to do it in exactly the same way as we've done before. And that will keep this spiraling in and around and of itself. And then the, the layer magic comes when you start to fill areas in with pattern or with black or color. Um, and then add shading and highlights. But even, even in this stage, you can see that that sense of dimension will come out. So I hope that is helpful. It wasn't something that I explained explicitly or brought out, but I just wanted to address that because I know that this kind of spiraling dimensional shape is something that, well, I particularly enjoy and I know other people particularly enjoy as well. And so I just wanted to come and share some tips with you on drawing this. Now I'm not going to finish this um, because I've got a couple of other related tangles I want to look at today. And two, but there's, there's most probably others that um, are related very much to this, very similar. Okay, and this is where we get down to this tiny, tiny little space here and I think I'm going to call that a day and I'm just going to fill that in with black so I know where these lines end and it gives me that central point. And so we've got something here that is very, very um, layered and spiraled round. The last thing to do is to actually connect along the pencil line if that's what you want to. I tend to kick the end up a little bit just to give a bit more shape to it. But however you want to do that, that's fine. That one I followed the pencil line. So don't worry if your lines aren't consistent, they don't follow the pencil line, you can adjust them to suit the shapes that you've got here or the way you want them to appear to be joined. And here I'm going to have to increase the length of the hook. And that's closed the space in now so that all kinds of goodness can be added. So that one is Aquafleur. Okay, the next one is 
the tangle pattern pepper. I think this might be a slightly smaller piece of paper. Um, this is, I bought a pack of paper the other, the other day. It took, it's taken it well over a week to get to me in three different deliveries. And it's this by Claire Fontaine, it's Maya paper. And there's a lovely selection of pastel coloured papers in here. Um, they weren't as pastel coloured as they appeared in the photographs, but I'm going to make use of them for drawing on. So don't be surprised if you get some very random colours in my work from time to time. <laughs> but there's, they, you can buy them in individual colours and I particularly like this one. It's a greyish green. So Pepper is another one of these tangles that is a random shape. And, but for this one, I'm going to actually use two, two, um, two pencil lines because I want, I want to be consistent about my centre. I don't know why I'm turning this around because it really doesn't matter where you start. And for Pepper, you start in the middle and we're going to start with a hook and then we're going to go out and I'm going to hook that one round a little bit there to that line. I haven't done a good, good job of that there, but as these are going to be, I'm going to color these ones in black. I can actually adjust the shape of that so I can have this really kind of hooking around this outer line and uh, as if it's bent over, you know, it's wire wrapped. It's wrapping around an, uh, an object that isn't flat, if that makes sense. So I'm not going to colour all of these in black with my O3 pen. So I'm going to start next door. I'm going to hook that around and then I'm going to bring that around. And I'm just going to keep on going creating these shapes and I'd prefer to add colour all in one go at the end because I'm going to swap a pen to do that and here I haven't hooked these over here but you can always go back and add that hook in fact I might need to actually lengthen them to get that illusion going So this sort of works in a similar kind of way, but it's not exactly the same, if that, makes, that does make sense. It's just that the process, these shapes that we're creating just remind me of Aquafleur. So I'll finish doing this because I think you might have got the idea and then I'll come back and start adding black and so on. So I'm going to stop and start my video today. Try to. So short, shorter time. So I'm actually back faster than I, 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 I intended to be. That's because I wanted to share something with you. I found it's far easier to create these shapes starting on the outside. So I'm going to put my little shape in here. I'm going to hook it over then go back up. So I can actually mark out how wide I want my shape and then hook it over and join it together. Whether you do that in a single motion where you hook over then go back and out or whether you split it up it doesn't make any difference but I've got exactly the same kind of shape going on so just try both ways and see which way you prefer let me finish this and I'll be so there we are with all of those finished but what really brings this to life is um, filling these in with black and I have got a pen here that I can create thicker strokes with and Fill this in perhaps a little bit quicker. This is my least favourite part of doing this. 
I don't know why I went here. I meant to do part of this in black and part of it with, with um, different effects. I think when you use black, it gives that really graphic kind of structure to the shape and it's really dramatic. High contrast and adding shadow to these to this shape really will bring it out. You don't actually connect these in the original tangle pattern, but you could connect these different sections if you wish. And I'm going to fill some of these sections once I've filled them in with black with some with some patterns. Um, but let's just have a look and see what's going on. That's a bit of an odd shape there. It's because I followed the pencil line instead of doing anything else. What I also found was helpful, and I meant to come back and show you, but I got so engrossed in doing this. Once you get into the rhythm, it builds up really quickly, is I actually put these end lines around the outside and then use those as a way of joining, of creating these shapes and spacing them out and getting in. If you, if you really want things that are equal size, then that's a good way to do it. Because there are many ways to get to the same result and there's no one correct way, it's what works for you. I mean, I started working from the inside out and discovered that I much preferred to work from the outside in. And drawing these shapes in, in that kind of way. Now I am going to adjust these as I go. Some of them do look a bit odd, but that's perfectly fine as well because that's one of the benefits of colouring shapes in, in black is that you can make those adjustments. Just thinking this time last week, what time is it? Oh, this time last week, I'd arrived at the steam gala, the railway. How strange. But yeah, um, so I am just going to fill these in. You are going to end up most probably doing most of these in black. But there's nothing to stop you doing them in stripes or filling them with other patterns if you wish. But actually I think I like the graphic nature very much. I love the structure it brings. I love that drama, the contrast. I call it high contrast. And uh, Zentangle, they call it drama. Just a word. Um, oops. If you make a mistake like I just did there with the line, you can always adjust the shape and nobody will know any difference. That's the beauty of working with black. Oop. And we've got part of the way around. That's, that was an awkward one for me to fill in. You can see the it really is becoming rather dimensional already. So I'll finish doing the other ones and then I'll... Okay, so this is Pepper done. Like this, no shadow, no highlight or anything. But there are a couple of things that I want to do. And do you think I can find my Uniball Signal Signo Gold pen? I know I've got it somewhere, but where I've put it, I do not know. It's not in all the usual places. It'll turn up after the video and I'll go, oh, there it was, right in front of me. But I've got some others instead, but I've got a bronze one here, which will do for today, I'm sure. I just need a scrap of paper to get it working on. Have I got a scrap of paper? No, so I'll go on the back. So this one should work just fine, hopefully. Oh, don't tell me this is going to be a pain of a one. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that one's an old one. Let's try this one. This is a jelly roll. This is, I think it's the Starlight or Star Starlights, which have got glitter in them. I don't know if you can see, but it does it catch the light? Yeah, you just got a hint of it there, but it does catch the light. They do take a little while to dry, so I'm just going to press it out and then you might be able to catch the 
glitter there. It, they are beautiful, these pens. But what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to put a row of these sparkly dots down the centres of but I do need the back here because it is getting clogged up. Don't tell me this one's going to be a pain. Oh, I've got it working again. Sometimes they take a little bit of coaxing to get working properly. All the jelly rolls do from time to time. I can see I need to sculpt this line a little bit there. But I really do like the glitteriness of these. This glitter will shift though if you touch it, so be careful. It does, as I say, it takes a while to dry. But I love giving this as the highlights to these particular shapes. I just think that it gives that ridge down the middle, like you'd find on something like a sea urchin or a seashell. And uh, it just gives that illusion that this might be raised up in just a darker colour. And I'm all for that kind of illusion. Of course, you could have chosen to fill the bits in between in black as well. Because that would have worked. But it's a different way of, different kind of shape that needs to be made, really. But it's possible to do. Or you connect these and fill the, the in-between shapes. So that's something to play with and to see whether it's a, uh, a finish or in a, a pattern or a shape that you, you prefer. And then I wouldn't put the dots down the middle because that would be a bit confusing if you're trying to make it look like it's um, you'd want it darker in the middle, so perhaps along the edges of the shape. So this doesn't take too long. And like with all jelly rolls, you need to have a fairly light hand with these to get the most ink out. And because they'll dry a little bit translucent, you're all you're never going to have them all that solid. The black will show through, so if it picks some of the black ink up as you're drawing on it, don't worry too much. Because the glitter will obscure that. This glitter is so fine on this. These are also fantastic to use with water pens, water brushes, or damp brush while they're still wet or even when they dry actually a um, bit harder to move them when they dry but they can still be moved like watercolour paints or any other water soluble media so you can blend them out to create a gradient which is a lot of fun and if you use two different colours you can blend them together that way as well it's so the very versatile to have in well, I think so. I just forget they do these. It's only now I've just remembered about that. And it's something for me to bear in mind with a little project I've got on the go at the moment. Perhaps. You can also get a clear star, which is, as it said, there's no colour in it, just the glitter. And so that's useful if you just want to add some sparkle and shine to a particular area. So these are going to have to go in like this. I'm going to have to accumulate those. Um, I think starting from the outside where it's the widest is most probably the best approach to these. already this is looking quite it's already got a lot more texture and interest in it not that it wasn't interesting to begin with but I, I do think that when you when we work with these lovely big shapes and we get these big spaces in between then there are things that we can do with them for sure okay now in between these spaces I do want to put some colour and what I'm trying to find here I know I've got one in here I have it's here this is a Staedtler 
triplus fine liner and it's a reddish brown or a dark red I'm not quite sure which um, trying to get 01 or 02 brown um, Sakura microns is a bit of a mare even 03s I managed to get 05s here in the UK they just aren't here so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use one of my favorite patterns to put some interest in between these areas and I'm using Shattuck where I am going to add in fact I most probably could have used the lighter colour of these but it'll be fine because I am going to use some shadow and light but I can't do anything at the moment until those dots have really dried the dots of gold of glitter so I'm using the curved curver shape version and it's based around a zigzag but I don't like to put the zigzag in to begin with because I find that I um, I get confused by it so there's the outer line so this one I'm going to go in the opposite direction so this one I'm curving from my right to my left and this one I'm going to curve out, out and upwards towards the right And then it's easy, I find it easier to fill these little sections in then as I go. And because we've got these black lines on either side, you don't have to be quite so precise about how you or where you finish the edge lines. But you do have to be fairly precise about where you finish, you join them up. So this is beginning to give some structure here to the inner space which I quite like or some interest there so it's not just open because I'm using this lovely greeny grey paper I could have filled this with colour or just with white and added some shadows but not today I'm just going to add this pattern which as I say seems to be one of my favourites so I'm going to go and finish this and I'll come back when I've done it. Okay, I've come back because I decided to put some perks in here just for a bit of variation and I just wanted to show you how I do that. So I'm starting somewhere where I think the highest point of these would be. I'm putting a full perk in there. Uh, a perk being a circular shape, a roundish shape. It doesn't have to be a, per a perfect circle but what I'm doing on the other side of that complete one is sort of like squashing others in so that they look like they're behind it um, as if this is falling away it's the illusion of it falling away so that will add to the dimension of this and I've got plans for them to fill them in as well. But I'm going to use my um, metallic pen, I think, for that in some way. So I'm going to draw a nice big one right in the centre there. And then I'm going to have the others looking as if they are stuck behind it. Like peas in a pod. Like so, and I'm just filling in those little gaps you might get along the edge. I do want them to appear like they are stuck in the channel between them. So there's a bit of a variation there. But of course you could use any patterns. I could have, if I thought earlier, this is the thought that was in my head when I started and it went, was I could have had these repeating all the way around for some variety. Now, I think these are dry, but there's one other pattern I want to look at with you today. So I'm going to pop that to one side and let everything there to dry fully. And this other one is another pattern that came to my head. And it's called Draw Wings. Draw Wings. And it sort of reminds me of um, the Aquafleur, but in a different kind of way. So with this one, I'm not going to start with... You could start with a pencil shape, but 
This one starts with a, an orb somewhere in the center. Or a circle somewhere in the center. And if you followed me long enough, you know I love to put a little seed inside these orbs. Okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh. <coughs> All right. Nope, hang on. Okay, let's see if that coughing stopped. It's asthma. So, drawings is an interesting pattern because it starts with this idea of drawing an S shape from the center. And then you go back in the other direction and add some shapes that could look a bit like wings. Now this reminds me a bit of, it does remind me a bit, quite a bit of the um, aquafleur for the shape and the hook around. And with this hook around, I like to put like a, an extra rib as it were in here. So that's one. I'm going to cough again, excuse me. Okay, let's see if that sorted it. So now I'm going to add another S shape on this side. And it's not going to be as long, but with this one, I'm going to go back and add that. And then I'm going to do exactly the same here where I'm going to add these almost feathery like wing shapes along there. I'll be back. Okie dokes, let's see how that is now. So I've got two of these, so I want to do more and get this going around in a... spiral kind of manner. And again, I'm going to pop some of these wing shapes. This isn't a pattern I've used very often, I have to say, but I have drawn it in some things occasionally or part of it, because it's really quite nice when you've got it um, growing out of um, something else, but you can actually complete the whole circle if you wish. Just tidying this up. So this is very much an Angela variation because I like things like this and we're going to add some more. Everything's always round and cuddly with me. So oh I've done the aura on the inside. It doesn't matter one little bit. The doubling up of that line. And here I'm getting a very thick black line around the centre, so the whole thing may become a, a black ball at the end of it. So I'm just going to complete this and fill the whole space up. Everything always ends up very rounded and very cute and cuddly with me. But I'm fine with that. That is my style. And then I think one more here may do it. You can see how this looks like wings growing out. <coughs> Actually, I've just seen what I've done wrong. These really need to come back here. So if I flip this over, nope, no can flip. So let me have a look at the draw wings again, because I can just see why mine was so cute and cuddly and not very much like the original pattern. So if I take this this way, then the first set of um, 
wings. Oh, I see what they've done. You draw all of these in first. There we go. Let's try doing it the official way. I do have trouble with the official step outs because they go in an odd direction. They sort of like go down one column, then you go back up to the top and start again. And I just automatically assume they go from left to right. So, so I'm just drawing lots of these S shapes around to create this. And then you can double them up. I'm not going to this time for speed, but then you connect them part way along. In fact, I do want to double them up because they just don't feel right as they are. But that's my aesthetic. So I'll do that one quickly here. And again, we're going to have these wing shapes and they're going to go like this. I think I actually am doing mine. They should be going out further. So let's have a look. As in, I should be aiming them. That's a bit better, so there, there's more space here. Let's try again. As I suddenly realise why I've had so much trouble with this over the years. So that's better, like that. There we go. Finally worked it out. Well done, Angela. And I've worked out why I have trouble with so many step outs because it's there's no one way that people lay them out. And um, I'm not always very good at paying attention to which direction you should read things. So. But I think hopefully you can see that why I thought of this when I was doing Aquafleur. It's these kind of shapes that almost hook around and the different ways that we can join them together. In Aquafleur, you'd had the um, connection here. In Pepper, we don't quite have an S shape. We've got just the curve over, but we don't actually join them up. And it just they just reminded me one of each other. Actually, the ones that I started with aren't too, too bad, really. Now I've got this far. So. Still a bit cuddly and puffy, but that's me. And then with these, what you can do is take these lines and we draw them or join them up to the main part of the wing to create shapes that do look a lot more like feathers like so and i tend i like to do them i think you do them that way i don't think it matters too much which way you do them they just work out no matter how but i like to take them from the top of the so what I'm doing here is I'm going along this and getting them to connect here. And that little point just disappears as part of this line. And the more ruffles you have in these, matters not because you just connect them in the same kind of way. As long as you're consistent along them all, if I'd had one here, so for example, if I'd had one here, then I could have connected that one to that perhaps in that kind of way. But there we've got all of these lovely wings going on. And you can finish them off in any way you like. You can add um, sections here or, or whatever. Um, but I'll come, you know, we can fill them in with pattern or as well. And I'm going to tidy up this central circle 
But I think you can see why I think this is so similar in, you know, what came to mind when I was doing the drawings the other day. So I'm going to take this red brown pen here. And I think I am going to add some things to perhaps some of the sections. I'm looking at the shape here and this one does remind me of Crescent Moon. So perhaps I can fill the tips in in this kind of way. It does make them look quite feathery as well. You do get feathers tips of feathers that have this kind of pattern on them. Think about peacock feathers with the eyes in them. This one, I've really mucked it up by drawing that line in, but still, I'll do the same thing here. And here. And then we really are getting that, it in, kind of enhances that feeling of movement, of spiralling movement around the centre. And of course, with the other ones, we could, we can still add shapes in like this, which you could fill in. I'm going to leave them open and blank for the moment because I want to see what kinds of sizes and shapes I've got all the way along to decide whether I fill the whole section in or whether I put some darker bits in. I think I'll actually just leave them open because I think it just adds some extra texture and interest, but also that feeling of movement. In the same kind of way, we've got movement in the aquafleur, which started all of this off, really. Brought things to my mind. And I'm sure there are other tangle patterns. Oh, look, I missed one out here. That's fine, it's gone in now. And this one I will just add a bit there, even though it's a bit of an odd shape. Perhaps I shouldn't have added anything in there because it might, it now sticks out a bit more, but you know, what can I say? <coughs> Gosh, I thought that stopped. So there's drawings, pepper, and then there's the version of aquafleur where things just spiral around. And they're all variations on a theme. That's the drawings I did where I didn't connect them here. But you, you can connect them. You could have created these scallops and that brought them right back to the end as well. So they, they all work out. So what I want to do now very quickly. Ew, got that. Got that. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. This is not good. Because um, it is asthma. So I don't know what's setting it off today, whether it was a cold night and the air's getting warm now, or whether it's something else. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting some shadow on the outsides towards the black here and trying to leave a section in the middle that hasn't got any graphite in. It's going to be challenging with me given that I've only got these thick and heavy paper stumps here. We really do need to get some finer tortillons. So 
water but it'll do for today and this instantly is giving a lot more dimension so if I do the graphite all around I won't do all of it I'll do part of this and then what I'll do so it does take quite a while for videos to process on my computer and then even longer for them to upload and be processed. But it's the uploading that takes the time on YouTube rather than the processing. Is so I'll complete all of these. So I'll show you part of what I'm going to do and then um, I'll put the finished ones up in the community section. So if you want to see them as they look when they're finished, that'll be a good place to look. So, so I'm just got some of the perks here and I can see that these areas are too small really for me to be mucking around with graphite such a big thing but when I put the white charcoal on top suddenly it brings that highlight back in and everything looks so much better in that kind of way, doesn't it? If anything, I must probably could get away with just putting the highlight in on these. But I quite like that shadow that's in there. And I am just going to use a white, the, the clean end of this, or cleaner end, because it won't stay clean for long, but just to Gently ease that into the paper. And then we've got a lot of, a lot more dimension going on. You know, there's that. And I said I was also going to come back with the perks because I've got some per I've got a perk or two here that I've done. And what I want to do here is in the bigger ones, I'm just going to pop some dots of it's glittering. I can't put this in before I add the graphite and chalk because it will spread with the tortillon. But I think you can see the, hopefully we have a look, yep, sparkle. You can see the sparkle and shine that we're getting there. So I'll finish that one. Okay, this one definitely needs shadows and highlights because it's pretty dull and boring so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put plenty of shadow here and down towards the centre for these so let's see how this will this paper is so smooth it just spreads like nobody's business but it'll be fine And I'm going to keep that, the arm that these feathers hang off, uncoloured or unshaded at the moment. So let me do one next door so we can see where we're going with this. Trying to keep that arm clear, I've just got a little bit of that black pencil there. So I'm just going to use an eraser just to remove it. Oh, where's my, there's it, there it is. So let's just have a look here. So we're just blending this in. And I want the shadow right in the corner there, but I want it to go out beneath that, this, this area here if I can. So I'm having trouble because I really need a much finer, pointier tip really. So let's do one more with you. So we're getting quite a lot of shadow where they overlap and it's starting to give that beautiful kind of dimension. It's addictive, isn't it? Once you start, you can't stop. 
I'm so glad I discovered these pencils in my stash. Because of all the pencils I've got, including the matte ones I bought to try, these ones, these ebony ones by Prismacolor, are the nicest I've got for adding graphite. They're not too shiny. They're not grey and too grey and grungy, which ordinary graphite pencils are. And they, they, they're really nice and soft. And just blend so nicely. And a little bit does go a long way with them because they are so dark. So I think I've made that bit of a mistake with the first ones in perhaps adding too much graphite. But I suspect on this particular paper, because it's so smooth, it'll be able to be erased quite easily if necessary. So we've got those. So now I am working on coloured or toned paper. So I just want to add some more shade there. So I should be able to get some highlights on here that will stand out. And I'm going to put the highlights along the edge and also inside this section just to get this section to stand out really. So that really does help to lift that, doesn't it? I think so. So I'll just do a couple more. And there's one other place with this, in fact with all of them, I think I'd like to put some... See? I'm trying to get this white to go back to the centre. It is awkward where I've got graphite blended over the line. So where you want to put the white charcoal, do avoid putting graphite there because you flatten the, um, the fibres of the paper and it just won't go down as well. I do like how... This softens that brown as well. I do, it sort of like adds a glow to it, which wasn't present to begin with. So we've got glowing wings going on here. So I'll do, I'll just do these because it won't take me that long once I've got the chalk down. because I'm not going to muck about with this too much. I just want to get that white in so there's no loose bits really. And that really does bring that to life. You can see the difference there. I'm happier with that now. The other thing you can do is we can add some shadow underneath this. So I can go close to the wing. I don't want to go too close because I don't want to lose. Any of that nice white highlight. But I've got enough graphite actually on this tortillon to do a fair amount of shadowing in this section. So I'm going to blend this out like this and give this lovely grey shadowy area around and then what I might do is I may just come in along the edge of the tile and add some white and just get them to blend together and create a nice gradient still got that highlight there there's that one. Um, the aquafleur I did yesterday, so I may, may fill this one in. I'll see how I feel, but I am going to focus on these two as examples of something that is similar to aquafleur. In my head, it, they're similar enough that I make the connection between them, and they came to my mind when I was um, drawing them yesterday. 
So I'm just going to say thank you for joining me. Please come and check back, um, you know, in the community section where I'll post an image of these finished because I will finish them. And this one is likely to have some sparkle added to it. I don't know how yet, but that clear star may come out for the um, top bits. And uh, definitely going to put some shadow in, in this kind of way. And with that white charcoal then as the contrast, just to bring some highlight back along the edges. Like so, just to help to lift that a little bit and make it look even brighter against the, the background. So thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. And it's given you some ideas of things you can do and materials that you don't have to buy. You can use anything that's in your stash. A white gel pen would work equally as well for the um, metallic dots. It's just that I've got a stash of all kinds of stuff that I don't often use. And I just thought it'd be nice too. So look after yourselves, take care, and I hope to see you again soon. Ta-ta for now. Bye. Hoyle.